if I may be. It's got a medical bracelet on it. There's different types of bracelets that you can put on it. It can be attached to the wrist or the ankle. And what this has inside of it is a transmitter. That transmitter is programmed to a specific frequency. And that frequency limits a, a tone every second. It can be picked up by this thing. It's a space age looking thing. It's a receiver. Now, those trained in electronic search specialists, as electronic search specialists through our search agency, are programmed and trained on how to use this receiver. This receiver, we pair the same frequency with that in that transmitter, so we can actually find that person through this receiver. It has it up to a mile range. Um, there's also a car antenna that comes with it, and that has a quarter mile radius range. So that allows us to hear a tone so we know the direction to look at it. It gives us a much, much better chance at recovering that missing person. Imagine you are the primary caregiver of somebody with one of these cognitive conditions. Alzheimer's, autism, dementia, Down syndrome, traumatic brain injury. It's a 24-7 job. There are no days off. You turn your back, that person is gone. Then what are you going to do? A lot of times, people with dementia or Alzheimer's, maybe their primary caregiver is a spouse who's also the same age, elderly perhaps. Um, it's a ton of pressure. Their day-to-day -day life is nothing but stress most times, right? It's a constant battle. So this technology will make at least some of that a little bit easier, where if their loved one goes missing, they call 911 because they're members of this program. 911 dispatches to my team now, my CERT team, my Project Lifesaver CERT team. So we're on that 911 responder run screen. So we're gonna get notified. We grab our receiver, we go to the location, and we start our search. Average search time is one hour once we're on the scene. That's how quickly we can find it. Can we interrupt for just a second? Sure. I just got a message from Deb. She said it's not working over with you two. Correct. Okay. Thank you. I hate for her for them to miss her. It's That's being, okay. It's I'm, being, not, I'm not done. It's being recorded. recorded. It'll be uploaded yeah. later. Okay. So. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. So, so that helps a lot in our ability to quickly respond because, like I said, after 24 hours, your chances of finding that person alive or uninjured goes down significantly. Yes? If they're already in water, is it like waterproof and they're still trying to... It's not 100% waterproof. Um, they're water resistant. They have to keep this on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The only time they take them off is if they have an MRI test, for example, because that's going to mess with the transmitter. Or they can, they can take showers, they can go swimming, they can do all those things. But the beauty of this program also is because those primary caregivers already have all that pressure on them to look after their loved one. We provide every 60 days, we go to that client location, we change their transmitter battery because the battery is the most critical part of this whole thing working. That transmitter is going to continue to send out a signal until that battery dies. Then there's no more signal. These kids also come with a battery tester that the primary caregiver gets and they are required by contract with if they get accepted into the program every day they have to test that battery if that battery doesn't work they don't get the red dot on their tester then they call us we go out there and we change it we replace the transmitter if it's faulty we replace the battery if it needs to be replaced we replace the band if it comes off with the client so it's it takes all of that worry off of their shoulders and allows us come in and do the stuff that we're trained and certified to do. Okay, so I said there are two conditions that make you qualify for that. First one is you got a cognitive condition. The second one is you have a 24 seven primary caregiver. And when I say that, I don't mean an in-home nurse. I don't mean that you have to be in a nursing facility. I mean that there is somebody with you taking care of your day-to-day -day needs every single day. You're not out of their sight. They're responsible for taking care of you. So that can be, like I said, a spouse, an adult child, an elderly parent. It can be a parent of a child with autism. So there's a lot of options there. The third condition that has to be met is you have to be a resident of Putnam County, right? This is the Putnam County Community Emergency Response Team. We are the agency that, Putnam, that Project Lifesaver International is entrusting to go ahead and work this program in our county. What am I here for today? Obviously, I want to get this message out because you or a loved one, a family member, a neighbor, 
you may know somebody that could qualify for this program, right? So I'm looking, we're gonna be looking really hard here in the next few months within the county to find those people that are most vulnerable that could benefit most from this program. Second thing I'm here for is I'm gonna tell you something now that I have to say. The cost for this, each transmitter kit, $450. Each receiver, $1,200. There's also optional at home receivers and perimeter alarms that can be purchased by these primary caregivers, but we charge zero to anybody who qualifies for this program and has the need. That's how important it is. My organization is all volunteer as well. Where we get the money from, we're going through grants, donations, we have a fundraising team. We're working really hard and hustling to try to make sure that we can offer this because we can only offer as many as we can support and afford until we get the money to go buy more equipment. So that's what I'm here for. First of all, the most important part is bring those people to me. I have a bunch of documents up here for you to take a look at. I've got a, an application, an enrollment application up here. I've got a couple of informational brochures you can take a look at to find a lot of these things that I've just said now. Um, it's exciting. I'm also going to want to, at some point, hold community meetings where I'll announce it on Facebook or I'll ask the office to send out an email blast that, hey, Project Lifesavers here tonight. We want to talk to anybody who has a loved one with any of these conditions that may benefit from this program. So that's what I'm here for, and I'm hoping that we go forward and get a whole bunch of people and take care of our community first, and then our county secondary. Anybody have any questions? Great. Do you have a list of folks that you uh, user, users, patients, whatever you call them, that you've signed up so far? Uh, we're going to sign our first one up this week, actually. Um, so we were trained in July, and we spent the whole entire summer. I had a team of eight people, and we spent our entire summer documenting all of our processes, setting up all of our procedures so we know exactly what we're going to do, understanding what type of equipment, toolboxes, receiver cases, things that we know that we have to have in order to be able to respond and support this work going forward. Because it's not just getting them signed up and giving them the wristband and saying goodbye, right? We have to have a rotation of people on a schedule that are going to cover certain areas of the county because we have to be committed to changing these batteries every 60 days, maintaining our equipment, right? There's a PLI portal, <coughs> which is a website where we can manage all of our clients. They're going to have ID cards that have all of their information, the critical information. A lot of autistic clients have trigger callers, right? Or fabrics that they don't have. There's a lot of things that we can garner from those enrollment cards that gives us a better chance that if we do find that client, we're gonna know not to run up to them and wave our hands if they stick to the ground, right? So we're giving ourselves the very best chance at positive outcomes in otherwise very bad situations. So you'll hear a lot more about this going forward and I hope to get a whole bunch of people signed up um, you can contact me. There's information on here and other contact information for our chief at CERT. Um, we're ready to go and we're really excited to get this program. Are some other counties doing the same thing? Good question. Um, actually, Hendricks County, um, they had a couple representatives from their PLI team that came and trained our Putnam County team. So they gave us the training. Now we train the rest of our organization that wants to be involved. And in, just in July, two weeks in a row, the Putnam County PLI team located a client two weeks in a row. Hendricks County. Hendricks County, sorry. Yeah. So um, that was pretty impressive. They have, I think they have 50 clients total signed up. So in two weeks, they found two that they brought this in. So it works. It really works. It gives us a better chance than just hoping that we're wandering in the right location. Yeah. Is CERT looking for more volunteers? Um, in order to participate in this program, unless you don't want to be a battery changer, we have battery changer training that everybody has to go through. Um, in order to be one of the CERT specialists, you have to be a member of the CERT organization in order to receive the training because that's our contract with PLI. They're basically subcontracting our agency to work on their behalf to make sure that we're doing everything the right way. We're following all the processes. <laughs> we're doing all of the training as mandated by Project Lifesaver. Project Lifesaver. Any other questions? Comments? 
Thank you, Chris. Thank you very much. We look forward to seeing you again and hearing more about this. And we'll be on we'll be on your side here to send out some emails. Absolutely. And, and I'll look, we'll look I, I, I even considered um, doing some search and rescue um, training maybe over by the dam. There's great areas there that we could basically what our training does is we hide these transmitters somewhere in a location. And in order for us to get certified, we have to find three transmitters in 15 minutes. Um, but now that we <coughs> have our organization trained in how to do this, I would like to do a practice exercise because it's been since July since most of us have been trained. Area by the dam would be a fantastic place to do that. We could triangulate search, we could go out different fields in different areas, each one of them with a receiver to get some really good practice, have somebody in the woods somewhere and let us go to work. So I may reach out to you at some point and ask, you know, if it's all right if you know our team assembles over there and we'll be wearing uniforms or we'll have our decals or something that identifies as part of the stuff. All right. All right. If anybody wants to make a donation on behalf of a loved one or if you want to potentially sponsor a, a, a neighbor or a friend or a family member through this program, we're more than happy to take donations. Like I said, we are spending a lot of our own money on this um, for the training materials that we have to do. We're printing out just tons of documents and um, spending a lot of time trying to make sure that this is going to be as successful as it possibly can be by being prepared. So we'll be looking for donations at some point too. I know everybody, there's, there's a lot of people in this room that are very generous and have been with a lot of things surrounding the lake, but it's a little bigger than that, but um, hopefully we can get some support on that as well. All right. Thanks, Thank Chris. We look forward that. to the board discussing this further about uh, financial Absolutely. help. And yep. we'll, we'll get back to you on that. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, announcements. Clear Creek Conservancy. Dwayne Colley, 282 Patriots Landing. Um, I know you're, I assume, all aware that we're in the uh, process of uh, expanding the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Um, and uh, we were made aware of, I, I say, uh, giveaway programs. Uh, they're really not giveaway programs. We're just trying to get our tax money back is what we're trying to do <laughs> with some of the government agencies. Um, we, had, we, we applied to three. One was the uh, American Rescue Plan, which was a county plan, uh, $7.3, $7.4 million uh, spread over two years. Uh, the other was a SWIFT program, a state program, $100 million. Uh, the other one's a ready program, uh, $400 million, that's a state program. Well, we uh, we got notice that we didn't make the SWIFT program. And I'm sure that each and every one of you in here are aware of what your waste treatment, wastewater treatment bill is every two months. <coughs> Let me read you the first line of the people in the state that got funding. They prioritize users' rates above $100 a month. Of course, that shot us down way, way, way from that. Low moderate income, and then whatever this means, projects that address regional needs. So that was the answer that we got from SWIFT, why we weren't eligible for, in other words, we don't charge near enough for our wastewater treatment. <laughs> People make too much money out here for us to qualify for that. We're still working with two programs. We've been going to a lot of meetings, meeting with a lot of people. Um, all we can do is keep our fingers crossed and hope that uh, one of them comes through for us. Uh, by the way, the First engineer uh, estimate for the expansion was $4.9 million. Well, hope we get some money out of it. Pardon? <laughs> that's, a, that's a nice nut there, Crack, huh? $4.9 million. Okay, thanks, Dwayne. 
Floyd Township Fire Department. I believe uh, Sean Wolf is here. Walton. Walton. Uh, run over the winter for clubs and committees here at the lake that uh, that are looking to advertise and solicit volunteers. Uh, just heard a lot of shortages uh, going around trying to get people to participate out here at the lake. So if you have a club or a committee and you, you want to be promoted in the highlights, either send me information to use for the article or call me and I'll help you develop it. But, uh, but I need, uh, uh, I started with two committees in October and, uh, uh, and I want to do at least one or two each month. So get something to me or call me by the 25th of the month, please. Thanks, Rick. Thank you. <clears throat> Shelnick. Don't believe anybody's here. POA Security. Ken, you're up again. I know. We've kind of had a busy month. Um, we've had four suspicious vehicles, four animal complaints, two 911 hang ups, uh, three disturbance calls, four alarms, one welfare check, two theft reports two trespassing calls, two administration, one domestic, uh, two medical assist, three paper service. We've had two operating while intoxicated. One was taken into custody after a chemical <laughs> test and was tested four times the legal limit. Uh, he was so intoxicated he couldn't even do a field sobriety. <clears throat> the other was hospitalized from a crash uh, a request for a warrant is being submitted for that person. Uh, we've had two lockouts, one citizen assist, uh, one public indecency, three civil matters, one overdose, one fraud, one traffic violation complaint, and 12 traffic stops. Busy month? Ooh, catching up with the big cities. <laughs> All right, thank you, Ken. Garden Club. Okay. Presentation of agenda. I guess everybody's okay with the agenda. Uh, presentation of the minutes, September 13th, board meeting. Make a motion. Motion to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? September 27th, operations meeting. I'll take a motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Treasurer's report, A.J. Stafford. Okay. <clears throat> so September, total accrued income for the month of September is 105,522. Total expenses were? One hundred and thirty-four thousand two seventy-four, leaving a negative income balance of twenty-eight thousand seven fifty-two, which is typical this time of year, just because we're obviously not bringing anything to fees and folks sticker. Uh, the total accrued income year to date is one million four hundred and eighteen thousand six hundred and forty-two dollars. Total expenses were one million. $239,314, leaving a net income balance of in the positive of $179,328. As of September 30th, our short term cash is $509,950. The total amount of our investments, which are made up of certificates, deposits, and money market accounts, are $209,000. last year motorized both fees and we did 120 percent or 20 percent better than last year in uh, non-motorized stickers and kayaks and things like that so respectfully submitted 
questions, comments, concerns? Exercising is starting to improve our non-motorized boat people. <laughs> All right. Thank you, AJ. Okay, we move on to the board committee reports. Uh, John Reedy, A and E. All right. Key for you. We got. And y'all have uh, the new trees, trees, one way or another. Yeah. 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 Did I send you three? No, I can. I can. Okay. Good. So, as you can see, we had a decent month in September. I thought it would have slowed down a little more, but we had a total of eight houses, two garages, four docks, three boat lifts, four non waterfront fences, and a porch for a total of 22 projects approved during the month. So, in other news, the other night, you all have a, a variant submittal that's come to the board. Uh, we just met on this one, which is Patriots Landing 309. You're here? Yep. Okay. Mr. Nelson is in the back of the room. So, and the reason we had to reject it is because it doesn't stay eight feet from the sideline. He is requesting a variance to build the garage, it's a three car garage, five feet from the property line. And I believe you said the next door neighbors yep. are aware of it and good with it. Yes, sir. And you can see on the drawing that you've got, there's a little bit of a variance difference. <laughs> but of the two drawings and what he did is he went back and redrew the driveway in the correct location correct yes sir and uh, so you can see where the garage is going to appear on one drawing it doesn't fill the house but the other one does this sits i don't know probably 100 plus feet away from the house 150 plus feet yeah yeah and he's mindful he's got a 30 foot filling line, but the variance is requesting a five foot side line setback. Questions? What? I was just wondering now why you just don't move it three feet closer to your concrete drive. According to your drawing, you have plenty of room, and it just seems to me it wouldn't be an inconvenience to do that. Uh, the, what it says is I can't even turn in to safely get a truck or vehicle in the mm -hmm. new garage because I would have to relocate the garage. It's only, it's only going to be about three feet off the edge of the drive, so I couldn't even keep the truck in the window. But you do have room that you could move it, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. You could move a building, but it'd be hard to move a trailer into the building. No, he's saying that, he's saying that he could, I'm going to guess what Tom is saying, is that he could knock out his concrete driveway and move it over. Not even knocked out, just if, yeah, need, if, if need be, one could put it a three foot addition onto the concrete driveway in that area, if need be. Is the neighbor here? Uh, no, he's not. And I've, I've actually gone to three and four, <clears throat> all the neighbors, and got text messages and, and verbal approval from everyone.
What does our rule again say? Does it need to be? Eight feet. Eight feet. Yeah. Eight feet. And that follows the Putnam County guidelines. Putnam County has no guidelines. No. Putnam County has no guidelines. Am I correct in that, Paul, for somebody? We have received a letter from Putnam County that they will not be involved in any variances. That we, no, 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 no. any of the board moves out. Right, right. My, what question, you my question is, is just what is Putnam County's setback? Like what is their setback? Not Tom, do you have the answer to that? I think I do, and I'll certainly pass this. I only make one copy. If you'd like to make more copies, you could be my guest. But this is the top of the legal recorded plat for Patriots Landing. And I'll just read an excerpt. That there be an eight foot public utility easement along the sides of all lots, eight foot public utility easement along the rear of all lots, not fronting Heritage Lake, and 12 foot public utility easement across the front of all lots and that they are provided easements and that all other easements are for the uses shown on the plat. So that's that's an accurate statement but it also in regards to giving variances we have complete jurisdiction as an A&E committee through the board to give variances to those easements to those setbacks <coughs> excuse me. That's correct. A letter from the attorney, and we have a letter from public, uh, Putnam County. They will not be getting involved in easements. Or, I'm sorry, the, vari the variations. So just, that's, that's all I can say about that. Correct. Yeah. Just so everybody understands how Putnam County works, if someone is seeking a change to their recorded property on a plat, what happens is they would submit their request to the Putnam County Zoning Committee. The committee would review their request and the outcome of the committee would then be sent to the three commissioners for final decision. So yes, in the past, Putnam County has allowed variances to the plat as it's recorded so yes, they do have the uh, procedure in place. And I guess I would just, I think, uh, I understand what you say regarding the letter from the attorney that we do receive. And I respect what he says. He did use what I would call selective language in terms of describing Putnam County's obligation to follow their recorded plat. And he also used what I would say again is selective language when he told us our position regarding our articles of incorporation. And I know we've talked about this before, but I just think, you know, I just wanted to make sure that everybody understands and all the board members have read the attorney response. The public has not had the opportunity to do that, to see the language that was used. That's all. And your opinion of the letter from Putnam County, Tom? Oh, Putnam County, the planning and zoning themselves said they don't do it, but their committee does have the responsibility to offer their opinion on a variance submitted to them to the commissioners. And then the three commissioners decide what they're gonna do with that. So in terms of Putnam County planning and zoning letter, that's exactly what they said. Does anybody else have any more questions about this particular property <laughs> and for the property owner back there? I do. <clears throat> Go ahead. Jake, how big is your apron going to be on the front of that building? Well, it, I'm pretty much almost not going to be able to have an apron. And that's one of the reasons I'm 
I'm trying to get it shoved back so that I could actually get a little bit of an apron and then be able to even turn a vehicle in those doors. I didn't know that because I was looking at the, obviously this is not perfect at the scale, but I was just yes. looking at how big that was. I was like, that is a 15 foot apron. No, it's not. I scaled it and for the depth of the garage is 30 feet. I scaled it in to the far edge of the concrete. You probably got 25 feet. That's it. So 25 you know, foot of brick apron? Of the apron and to the other side of the driveway. That's all it's got. So the width of the driveway plus the new apron to the face of the garage would be 25 feet wide. At the, at the very, that's what I'm scaling. Yeah. Did you say to the face of the garage? The face of the garage. Where yeah. the doors are. Where the doors are. But the problem is when you turn a vehicle in, you need more face than that. So the truck. Especially trucks, absolutely. Especially no, I agree with that. I'm just saying, like, yeah. when I was looking at this, I was looking at that going, <laughs> you know, three feet, you might be able to slide it back. But if you only have a 20 foot wide radius, that's going to be awful hard to back a boat in there. Well, back a boat or pretty much anything. And I know, I know that lot, and there's a lot of, I mean, I guess you could cut down a lot of the trees, but there's big hickory trees in there, so. Any idea how wide the driveway is? The drive, the drive is about 12 to 13 feet wide right now. Yeah. Single car. So that 12 yeah, to 13 a, feet, so that gives you approximately 10 foot eight to answer AJ's question. Yeah. But yeah. How far is the other house? Our property. Uh, I'm. It's even further. He's actually closer to the water than me. Um, my house actually sits closer to the proposed garage. Steve, is there, if, if you look at the big drawing on there, his, the other house is like right here and right here. They're in line with the house. So there's the nothing. There's right nothing on the other side of the garage. But there's yeah. nothing up here by the. That's correct. Okay. It's open. Yes, he has. They all have really long, narrow lots. Almost an acre right there. <clears throat> um, can I ask you a really silly question? Sure. Um, which is real silly. Yeah. <laughs> Why wouldn't you put the doors on the end of it facing the road? Because um, I want to be able to access from the side and be able to see the doors. I don't plan on having. Uh, Access from the road. So you can use the existing. I want to. I want to use the driveway. existing drive, and just adding it off to the side there. Well, I can see that if you spun it around. Is that what you're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yeah. You spin that around, so you're going to go what? Forty-eight feet, forty-two feet off the property line. You're going to be damn near on top of the on top of the driveway. Yeah. No, I think he was saying just put the two doors in the front of the garage. In the well, 30, 30, 30, right here. He's well, saying yeah, you put them in side. the front of the garage, but it's not going to work well, out. Well, I, I would just think of from the being simple, just in and out kind of thing, versus trying to make the cut and turn and um, just add a driveway and put the doors on the, on the end of it. It would just be easier to see the that the doors are open or not from your house, though. Security well, reasons. Security reasons, too. I'd like to be able to see my doors from the house and... And not have a door facing somewhere I can't see. You know, if there's nothing there on the other side of the garage. Except the road. Yeah. I mean, utilities and stuff are gonna have plenty of room to go through. It's not an easement. It's it's the it's the property line. Yeah, the property line, right. yeah. But there's nothing there on the other side, so like I said, it was just a silly question. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, John and I looked at that. John and I walked the property this morning. Uh, I was made aware of this towards the end of the week. Um, we walked the walked the property this morning. Um, I think that if if in fact if if everybody's if if we decide that we want to uh, award him with a variance, then I think he can get documentation from all these neighbors to be put in the file along with the uh, variance. We can make it um, pending that too. 
you know, it, it doesn't look like it, uh, I saw it also, it doesn't look like it impedes any of the neighbors' view, et cetera. So, you know, I would think the neighbors wouldn't, wouldn't have any objection to it because it's not impeding their view or causing any uh, harm to the neighbors. So I, would, I wouldn't see why they would object. I just still think that we should follow our guidelines with respect to the eight-foot easement. I have a question. Um, so if we put the proposed garage where it is, you said uh, where it would be without a variance, supplies a 25-foot edge-to-edge approach, is that correct? Do what now? You had stated that if we put the garage without a variance where it would legally lie, there would be a 25 foot. Basically, edge the way I look at it, the garage is going to be the way that, because the two drawings, the driveways are different. This right. one's wrong. Right. The actual driveway is this one. Right. So it would move it over another five feet, I mean, another three feet. Or the driveway? The garage, right. So and that gives... It'd be even tougher, so... So that gives uh, how many feet of approach? That would only give it... Let me see. I don't have a scale with me, and I... So I have little feet, tricks that I use. From okay, being so 25 feet is with the variance? Sorry? He, he said before 25 feet is with the variance? Correct. Yes. As the driveway? As the drawing is drawn. And does 25 feet allow the ability to pull a truck or a trailer in without driving off the driveway? Mm, I don't think it will. I don't. It would be very close. Well, you you can't count on a winner either, so. Yeah. So you're saying if we if we approve the variance, you're still gonna have to drive off of your driveway to get into your garage? What I might have to do is add some, some more concrete on the other side right. so I can leave my drive or leave the existing right. drive and then back in. Right. So that's what I would have to do. With the variance. With the variance. I just don't want to have to tear out my concrete driveway. Is there... And without the variance, that option would not be possible? I cannot I cannot fit that garage in there with the, the widths and the distances that I need without in getting in jeopardy of that tearing that concrete out. But it is it an option just question is it an option not to tear the concrete out but just to add a, a slab adjacent to it a three-foot slab or a five-foot slab I would think you'd want to extend you know make it bigger if you're saying you'd have tr you currently have trouble and you still will have trouble oh I, I will have to add concrete on the other side I will have to does the other side mean the side that Across from the entrance. The left side? Yes. Across from the entrance. Yeah, the across from the driveway. I will So that would be adding here. Yes, sir. Okay. So you're adding there whether the variance is approved or not. Correct. Okay. Well I, I I won't be able to build a garage if I you know. Anything else? I have a question for you. One. No, it's on the A&E committee. Okay. And we didn't see the, where the driveway actually ended up. And I'm curious, how far from the garage is it to the property line where he'd have to turn to go in? I'm just curious. What do you mm -hmm. Well, to, you're talking about the, to the end of the garage right? where he wants mm -hmm. to put it, or where, you know, and, and, to the, and to, to the property. So how wide access does he have to turn in? He had his driveway all the way over to the back then, right on the property line. If he had it all the way over where? Well, then he has to come in like this, right? Well, yeah, it's, it's actually, it's not like the drawing we looked at. It, yeah. it, it changed a little bit because he redrew it here. It was cutting, actually. The driveway was in the garage here. It kind of meanders the way the driveway is. Kind of it meanders, meanders around around right. the trees. Yeah. Oh, oh. Have a refresher memory. Here's the drawing we looked at. 
Yeah. All right, but this is how the driveway really <coughs> It goes like that in the house. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's lots of oh, so that's a good front. Yeah, that's a good front. Right. Nice. If, I, if I'm reading this, and he's going to have to widen this anyway. Yeah. He's, he's, he's probably going to have to add some concrete here. But how anyway. far is he widening? He's got plenty of room. Is this poured here? Well, that would be poured. Right now, all it's poured is right here. That's the exact point. Actual existing concrete driveway, right? There. Right now, is this where you actually want to put the garage? Yeah, yeah. And how much room is up to here? I mean, if we put the, if he looks like adds to his driveway like this, it looks like it's about 12 feet. So, would he have enough room to turn then? It's going to be tight no matter how he yeah. does it for the driveway, even if he was able to pull over there. Yeah, you see, here's a 30 foot. Mm -hmm. Need more clearance than 30 foot to get into the ground. Okay, that's just a, <laughs> yeah, I yeah, understand. thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, any other questions from the board? Um, nope. I feel like we could probably call for a vote. Call for a vote. Yeah. All, right. mm -hmm. All those in favor of issuing the variance? Raise your hand, and Rick, you can unmute and tell us on the phone. I vote yes. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six yeses. All those opposed? Two. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm voting for summer. Seven yeses, two noes. Variance has been issued. With the exception that we need the neighbors, okay. Yeah, we just yeah. need those uh, documents from the neighbors. Okay. You can write them up, just tell them that the neighbors agree and, and have them sign it and put it in your, have it submitted so they can put it in your file, protect everybody down the road. Thank you. Guys. Thank you for coming. I'll make it short. The only other topic I had is just to let the board know that uh, we've been, at a and &E committee has been looking into uh, the possibility of either fines, basically it amounts to people that say move a lift and they don't get approval for it. They build something, they build a dock without approval, they won't remove it. What recourse that we have in so far as fines for it? And there are already a couple. So, so we're just discussing it at this time. I just want to make you aware at this point. We only met on it once and uh, so we have yet to sit down and actually brainstorm an idea for the possibility of some fines when people won't follow the rules. I would suggest that uh, once you guys get a uh, uh, opinion, if you will, that let, let me know yeah. and we can forward that opinion to the attorney okay. and see what we're up against. Thank you, John. You're welcome. One question for John, if I may. Do you have any idea how many in 19, in 2021, how many new houses have been approved? No, oh, I don't know. Uh, I can find that out so far because I keep on my report. So since March, so, but I'm sure April has them all. Next on the agenda, campground. Rick? Uh, Rick Stevens, 95 Acre Hill. Uh, the end of the season is coming upon us at the campground. Uh, the last day to camp there was <coughs> Saturday, October the 30th, the Sunday the 31st being the last day the campground's open. Um, for the units that are being removed, we ask them to be removed by the 31st. Um, any units being left must have completed the winter storage application um, registration uh, with Deborah. Or they can also get it from Phyllis and Richard Lovelace, the campground managers uh, down there at the campground. Um, follow up to the last meeting, uh, Ken has ordered our signs and he's going to get those in place after the end of this season. So no sense of putting them in before the end of the season. Bring it on fresh for 2022. So thank you, Ken, for that. They'll be without bird poop on them. <laughs> for a couple weeks now. I think I can get with you for locations that you're looking at. I've yeah. got them all in my office. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, sir.
cleanup committee. Anyone here for that? Right here. Okay. Uh, the September 18th clean sweep was a huge success. We had over six, 64 residents that um, brought out their mattresses, box springs, couches, stoves, refrigerators, etc. Um, <coughs> we had a total of three dumpsters. One dumpster was devoted to metal. We filled that metal dumpster and we filled the other two dumpsters completely to the top. So I'd just like to thank all the volunteers who showed up. Uh, we did have volunteers that came. One father brought his son and devoted an hour to helping us. And we had um, a total of 10 volunteers that showed up. So it was a huge success and we thank the community for participating and getting their junk off the streets. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> okay, uh, government committee, Dick Werner. Dick Werner, 183 Jefferson Valley. Um, this report highlights local government decisions pertinent to Heritage Lake Putnam County residents. Uh, starting out with the commissioners' meetings, uh, Gerald Consulting appeared before the commissioners to report on COVID Phase Three OCRA grants awarded to county small businesses. Twenty-six businesses were awarded nine thousand six hundred fifteen dollars each. The commissioners report that uh, IEDC, Indiana Economic De mm -hmm. Development Commission, and ARP American Rescue Plan funds have been applied for and include Clear Creek Conservancy District Wastewater Treatment Plant Expansion. Per Commissioner Woodall, no funds were requested for anything to do with the municipal water supply for Heritage Lake, as the, uh, the Conservancy informed the ARP committee that CCCP has no interest in a municipal water supply. As a member of the long-term planning, I had proposed and gotten an agreement from long-term planning committee members to investigate pest wells as a way to monitor our two aquifers as this community continues to grow by leaps and bounds. I'm working to get info on pest wells from Indiana DNR. I encourage all residents to remember the CCD action when conservancy board seats come up for vote in the future. DC EMS Director Kelly Russ was recognized as one of the top 40 EMS directors under the age of 40 at a national ceremony in Texas. So Kelly's doing a great job turning around what Operation Life is trying to provide for this community. Um, IEDC reported that unemployment in the county is now at 3.6, same as before the pandemic. A year ago, it was at 5.9%. And uh, the CCCD meeting uh, on uh, September the 16th, just a couple notes, 1,543 account locations were reported. Mm -hmm. That's homes connected to the sewer system. The number in March of last year was 1,438. So that's 105 homes added since, uh, as of September 16th. So 105. 105 since March of last year. And that's just the ones that are hooked up. They're that's just the ones that are hooked up. The ones that's under construction. The ones under construction are hooked up, yeah. <clears throat> the board was asked about the possibility <clears throat> to place an Eagle Perch lakeside on the Conservancy Point. Dwayne Kelly asked for a member survey before granting such permission, and I passed this task on to the POA office. Perhaps some of the members have seen the uh, email request for response. Uh, I have a vote count as of today. Oh, great. Roger Wright, 466 Mill Springs. Uh, yes, 248, no, five. Good. A um, couple more notes. The next government committee meeting will be held uh, Wednesday, October 20, to follow the long-term planning meeting, which starts at 6, 6 p.m. The next American Rescue Plan Committee meeting is tomorrow, October 12 at 6.30 at the EMS building on the square in Greencastle. There's a uh, big Walnut Watershed Alliance meeting to be held here in our clubhouse conference room on the 19th at 10 a.m. 
And lastly, I want to report that I will be stepping down as government committee chair as I'm in the process of closing the sale of my home and moving on to a new chapter. So uh, it has been a pleasure and an honor to serve this committee. Oh, thank you, Dick. Yes. 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 I'll be around for a while. I'll be around for one more board meeting. I, I will have to say at this time, <coughs> I've been here 10 years, and I don't think the government committees have ever been represented better by one individual since I've been here, and I'm sure people that have been here a lot longer than I have would attest to the same thing. So thank you for your service, Dick. Mm -hmm. I think I've uh, created a pretty uh, amenable relationship with our county commissioners and officials. So hopefully we can find somebody to carry that on. Well, can we get yes. the people to stay? <laughs> Are you saying about I got to in the- uh, Buy them a house in the community. No, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna be a resident of Monroe County. Okay. Thanks, Dick. Good luck. Thanks. All right, uh, next we have the Lake Committee. We have a guest for the Lake Committee. <laughs> you know who I am. I'm Jim Hill and Brian. Three Carl Lincoln Hill. Pure pressure. Jim is the vice chair. No, not yet. <laughs> uh, at our last meeting, we had 13 in attendance. And for the first time in quite a while, we uh, had a new attendee. Bill Anderson is his name. Mary Petruzzi brought him, and it sounds like he may want to join our community, uh, committee. Uh, you have in front of you a quick report. I'm just going to highlight a few <coughs> things. Kent Stevens reported for the financial statement ending in August with revenue from fundraising activities, donations, and interest, and expenses for the month. We had an ending balance of $29,731.86 in the kitty. Uh, he also reported, Kent Hoops reported, that we had 20 buoys, I was corrected by Kent the other day, that actually 16 have already been put in the lake. We have four left over for next spring. Mary Petruzzi made a presentation to us on an apparel company she found in Broad Ripple that could institute an online ordering process where members could order their own apparel. They could pick their own design and the first order would be delivered to the lake in mid-December. She's working on this, we'll find out pretty soon how it's gonna work. The only stipulation to the design is that the official Heritage Lake logo must appear somewhere on this selected apparel. It can be on the shoulder, the arm, wherever. Uh, she asked for $450 from the committee to initiate the website. It was approved and we paid for it. Uh, Hoops also reported that Aquatic Control had made a bid for a fishing stocking that will take place this fall. The committee approved the bid of $8,000 $950.55 for 1,100 6-8 inch hybrid striped bass and 3,400 3-4 inch red air. With the board's line item for fish stocking at $4,500 and the $1,500 donation from the Bass Club, it left a shortfall of $2,950, which the committee approved to pay. And then uh, Deb, Rick, and Phil had met earlier to clean up some of the ambiguities in the current lake rules, and they made a presentation to the committee. After much discussion, the changes were either revised or approved, and then the committee voted to approve the 2022 rules book for presentation to the POA board at their September 27th ops meeting, which was done. Um, <clears throat> once you guys approve that, uh, the committee will work on the new rules test questions for 2022 as the test is slated to be given every year. Finally, we made nominations for new board, our new officers for next year, and we will vote on that at our next meeting on October 27th. Any questions? Thank you. Jim? Clean water, Phil McKinley. Uh, nothing new to report this month. <clears throat> Thank you, Phil. Long-term planning, Summer Ramsey. Anybody have anything from Summer? Okay. Siltation, Wayne Kelly, you have anything for Siltation? <coughs> Siltation, 282, Patriots Landing. Uh, I just since the subject was brought up. Uh, Shannon is working on our last project, which is cleaning that small pond up the north end. 
Al, uh, I'd like to just throw a thing in. If he gets that cleaned out by next spring, which I'm sure he will, uh, you might want to keep an eye maybe I'll throw in a few fish in that uh, after he gets it cleaned out to a depth where fish could survive in it and get some of the brush cut around the edge of it. So you might just want to, I want to keep that one in mind to throw some bluegill or catfish or something in there. Um, we're not meeting anymore till March. Um, but I do have uh, one exception I'd like for you to consider. Uh, I've been trying for quite a while to get some new blood on the uh, siltation committee. Uh, most of the siltation committee are senior citizens. Elders. <laughs> well, there's two of us that are past elders. <laughs> and uh, I have a young man that has attended four of the last five meetings. The regulations are they have to attend three meetings in a row. Um, he's attended the last two meetings. He missed the meeting before that because of a business situation. Now, if we make him go to the the three in a row before the board approves them. That would mean that we don't meet till March. That's after your March meeting. It would mean I would have to bring his name to you in April, which means he wouldn't be on the committee till our April meeting. So I would like for the board to consider uh, appointing the young man of uh, A.J. Stafford to uh, the siltation bed. Ooh, that's going to be a tough one. <laughs> that's going to be a tough one. Uh, okay, since uh, there's still a possibility we might make the first, the second half of the game tonight, all those in favor of putting AJ on the Siltation Committee answer by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Opposed? You have yourself a new member. Seat more. Okay. Well, if you get, if you get some more that can attend some quick meetings here, we can maybe even get our email votes for you. All right. Uh, HLEPT, we'll just run over that since that's part of the uh, long term planning. Uh, election committee, do we have anything? Jim Muhlenbein. I'll just say um, <coughs> we have three candidates now that. Dick has made his announcement tonight. Uh, we have three candidates who have picked up petitions. Two have turned them back in, one has not. That was as of this morning. Mm -hmm. Right, Deborah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Three candidates? Uh -huh. Okay. We <clears throat> got. Um... Before the office closes. Okay, dokie. All right, uh, manager's report. Okay, I'll read through this manager. quickly. Kickoff is in 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the leaf drop off at the 30 acres will begin this Saturday. Uh, the gate will be manned on Wednesdays, Saturdays, and Sundays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for your leaf drop off. Uh, this is for leaves only, no branches of any kind. If these dates and times are not convenient for you, your leaves can always be bagged and set out for your regular trash pickup. Um, this is a plea. Uh, speaking of your trash, the additional and larger dumpsters at the marina is paid for by Song's Restaurant. These dumpsters are not for the public. It does not matter if you just have one bag or you just visit on the weekends because 
for every one person that thinks that their trash is no big deal, there's many more. Please stop doing this. Please stop uh, putting your trash in someone else's dumpster um, because I should not have to spend money to build a fence and a gate around it. Um, on several occasions, several have been seen doing this. Uh, just an FYI, illegal dumping can be expensive. Um, this week before the, probably, I got scheduled for Wednesday before removing the security boat, um, I'll be retrieving uh, some lake samples uh, to de determine the quality of our lake water. We do this every year. This report will be shared at our next board meeting. Uh, before the year end, we will be rebuilding the electric stand um, at the Jefferson Pond, replacing that aeration pump that caught fire a while back. Um, last opening date for the campground is October 31st. We'll be winterizing all the water lines throughout the campground um, within days after closing. And shortly when finished the campground, we will be winterizing the outside restrooms at Lincoln Park and, and at the marina. And they should be closed by mid-November. <coughs> On Saturday, October 30th, uh, from 5.30 to 7.30, please do not forget the trunk or treat event that is being held in the gravel area up by the marina parking lot. We will also be having our trick-or-treat hours the same night from 6 to 9 p.m. on Saturday, October 30th. There will be several families out that evening, so please, for everyone's sake, um, be, mi be mindful of your speed and drive with extreme caution. Finally, November 11th is Veterans Day. Um, six years ago when I began this job, I wanted to use this day to honor our veterans by serving them breakfast. Uh, we've enjoyed doing this every year. Myself, Deborah, April, and Rose, I would like to invite our veterans and their spouses back for the breakfast again this year from eight to 10. Uh, your service to this country is appreciated and we hope to see you for breakfast on November 11th. Thank you. Ken, can I ask a question? With regard to leaves, um, you don't want them in plastic bags, do you? They can bring them, but they can't, they got to dump them. So they can't leave the plastic bags. No, okay. Yeah. And, the, and the, that's the reason we have somebody man there, so that won't happen. And, and they'll bring in stuff. Thank you. And the close, the final closing of the marina, the gift shop? It will be at the end of this month. It'll be the last weekend of this month. Thank you. I've got the hours posted on the door of the marina. Thanks, Ken. You're welcome. Old business. Okay, A and E rule modification. Got to read. Okay, I'm going to present. There's a motion to approve A and E rule modification, which amounts to Rule One Fifty Seven, uh, deleting line one. B and strike it entirely from the rule book. So, any rule book. This will be the second vote on this. Can you just remind us what that is? Give me a minute. <laughs> Give it right up with me. One fifty seven variations HOL HLPOA board after consulting with any committee shall determine and vary these regulations in harmony with their general purpose and intent only in the specific instances herein set forth. Application. Do you want to hear all the applications or the one we're deleting? One you're deleting is all. The, it's, uh, D says variations of survey and setback line for front side or rear setback shall be considered by the board only after written approval of said variation by Putnam County in the Planning Commission. What was the, uh, I'm sorry, <coughs> what was the vote? Who, who had the vote on last meeting? What the, was it? Yeah. It was eight to, uh, excuse me. Eight to one. Eight to one. Mm -hmm. 
Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Raise Aye. your hand. Aye. Still eight to one. Opposed? Eight to one. Some are four against it. Four and four. Okay, thanks, John. Uh, under old business B, Marina Boat Dock Parking. Is there anything new to discuss today? Mm -hmm. I have nothing. Nothing new. We just were, you know, we talked about the budget the other day. We just don't have a line item in the budget for this, so we're just going to have to figure out how we're going to source changing docks for Marina. Did you ever have that guy come out with the sample? He emailed me, I said, how about Sunday this week? And he said, sure, let me look at my calendar, I'll get back to you. <laughs> and here we are. So okay. I will try again. But yes, so if there's any crowdsourcing in the world out there and that wants to have some parking for the restaurant or the marina area, they'd like to donate. For boats. <laughs> for boats. For boat. boat parking. <laughs> yes, docks of some variety. Thank you, AJ and Steve. New business, Lake Rule Book, 2022. First vote, everybody has received the revised Lake Rules. Any discussion? Uh, you wanna raise the motion to accept? I should second. accept all the, well, uh, maybe I should like tell us how all the changes that have been made that we went through the last time. We've all looked at them. Yes. Page by page by page by page during the office meeting. Second. Second. All those in favor of adopting, uh, accepting the new adoptions made by the Lake Committee? Aye. 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 Unanimous. We'll have the second vote will be old business A for the next. Can candidate. I make a motion to uh, eliminate the need for the second vote on this particular rule book document? Because I know the urgency in, in getting it accepted. Second, anybody? I second that. All those in favor? Aye. You got it. Thank you, Tom. You're approved. And that comes off of all the business. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, 2022 budget. First vote. Motion to accept. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Second vote will be on the next board meeting as old business. <coughs> That brings us to open forum. Keep in mind, the Colts game just started. <laughs> <laughs> Marianne. Marianne Novak, 25 Mill Springs. Uh, two things quickly. First one is thank you to everybody who's been donating the coats for kids. The uh, box will be in the hallway, the entranceway to the clubhouse until end of day Thursday and then Friday morning we're taking them over. Uh, and so far, looking at what we got, what a generous community we have, and really, really good coats. Thank you so much, and scars and gaps and that. And the other thing is, you can roll up your arms, get them ready. We're going to have another blood drive uh, uh, in January, not until January the 6th, uh, here at the clubhouse, lower level from 2 to 7. So it's online, call me. If not, I'll be calling you. So thank you. Thank you, Mary Ann. Thank you for all your volunteer work well received by the community. Thank you. Anybody else? I'll take a motion. Motion. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 